I've got to be honest, okay? I can't stand these corny math shirts. Stay positive. I ate some pie and it was delicious. I just don't like them. They're not shirts that respect the beauty of mathematics. They're shirts that say, look at me, I'm a nerd. The sort of math merchandise I'd actually be interested in just didn't exist. But after only a bajillion hours of work, now, it does. It's a shop for math-inspired fashion and accessories, and to launch this brand, I made the coolest math shirts ever created. Today, I want to show you the designs that you can go buy right now exclusively on mathshin.com. I'll show you some samples and even give you one more big announcement at the end of the video. But first, I want to explain what all of these designs actually have to do with math. Before I start explaining, as a bonus challenge, you could try explaining all of these designs in the comments yourself. Let's get into it, and I want to begin with my favorite design. If you go to mathshin.com, this is the design that you'll find in the Pigeonhole collection. And it was the idea for this design that gave me the idea for Mathshin as a whole. I wanted to make some variety of math merchandise for a long time, but I just didn't know a unique angle that would make the merchandise actually valuable to me, and I didn't want to be pet merchandise that I didn't think was really, really cool. But with this design, I had the angle. Math shirts that don't look like math shirts, unless you know math. To most of us, this is obviously a math sweater, but to most people, it would absolutely not be. For the uninitiated, what this incredible design shows is the pigeonhole principle. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pigeons, but only five holes. The pigeonhole principle says if there's more pigeons than there are holes, then at least one hole has to have at least two pigeons. So it's no surprise here that we see a few pigeons all cozied up together in a single hole. It seems obvious, but it's a really surprisingly useful result throughout combinatorial mathematics. You can also use it to answer a kind of gimmicky question like this. Are there two people in the USA with the exact same number of hairs on their heads? Some people may think, well, probably not. I mean, the exact number of hairs on your head is a pretty unique personal thing, probably not shared with someone else. Others might think, oh, well, any two completely bald people would have zero hairs on their head, though we could exclude them without changing the mathematics much. Either way, the pigeonhole principle makes it really easy to answer this question definitively. We just need the right pigeons and the right holes. In this case, the holes are the possible number of hairs someone could have on their head. Let's say we exclude bald people, so then the possible numbers of hairs on someone's head is between one hair and a high end for the average number of hairs on someone's head is 150,000. So just to be super safe, let's go from one hair all the way up to a million. So there are a million possibilities for the number of hairs someone could have on their head. And now perhaps you see where this is going. There are only one million different possible number of hairs someone could have, but how many people are in the United States? Well, there are about 340 million people in the USA. So yes, there must be lots of them, in fact, with the same number of hairs on their head, because there are only 1 million different possibilities, but over 340 million different people. There are more people than there are possible numbers of hairs, so there must be at least two people with the same number of hairs. The pigeonhole principle is a classic fact of mathematics. It's beloved and it's used all the time, so this is 100% a math design. Of course, perhaps the best part that makes makes this such an amazing design is that all of the pigeons look like famous mathematicians. Many of you can probably recognize most, if not all of these pigeons, just because the artist did such an incredible job. Tell me in the comments who you think all of these pigeons are, and check out the pigeonhole collection on mathshin.com where I list exactly who they are supposed to be. Next up, head to mathshin.com and check out the Optimal Packing Collection, and this is the design that you'll see there. Mathematics, of course, is a thing of beautiful patterns and symmetry, so if you see someone wearing a hoodie like this, I mean, is this a math hoodie? It doesn't really look like it, because what would the mathematical pattern be? 
Well, it is indeed a math hoodie. And it comes from asking what the best way would be to pack a number of unit squares together. For example, if I have a single square, the most efficient way to pack it is trivial. You just put it by itself. What if we have two squares? Well, then the most efficient way to pack them is to just put them side by side. If we enlarge this packing, it looks like this. If these were unit squares, so their side lengths are one, then we can pack two of them together in a larger containing square of side length two. And this is the best way to do it. With a containing square of side length two, you can also pack three squares. That's the best way to pack those together. Since four is a square number, four, just like one, can be packed perfectly like this. Unsurprisingly, if you're trying to pack five squares together, the best known way to do it is a little bit awkward. While the previous few examples, we only needed a containing square of side length two for five squares packed together, we need the containing square to have a side length of two plus one half root two. It involves this awkward 45 degree rotation of a square in the middle, and this in fact has been proven to be the optimal way to pack five squares together. The strategy of having squares in the middle that have been rotated 45 degrees continues to work well for lots of other packing problems. But the case of 17 squares is notoriously ugly. It looks like this, and I thought that would be the perfect sort of thing to put on a shirt. Unlike the five square arrangement, the 17 square arrangement, which was discovered by John Bidwell in 1997, has not been proven optimal, but it is the best known way. With this arrangement, we're able to pack 17 unit squares in a larger containing square of side length roughly 4.675. This, of course, is an artist's rendition of the optimal packing. The actual thing, of course, features perfect squares, but that's not not very artsy, is it? While so much math has beauty in its symmetry, this is a classic example of finding some beauty amongst the chaos. I also thought the design looked nice on a snapback cap, so you could buy that also at mathshin.com if hats are your thing. Here I am wearing it in the hot tub. Of course, I didn't have artists put numbers into their designs because I wanted the designs to not look like math but on some of the products I have indulged in some numerical embellishments. For the super comfortable optimal packing pullover, which I absolutely cannot stop wearing, I love this thing so much, on the right sleeve we have 4.675, that is the side length of the containing square, and then on the left sleeve, of course, you have 17. It's the N equals 17 case of optimal packing. Adding these extras on the sleeves makes things cost more, but I've tried to include products at a variety of price points, so some of them have some extras that I thought looked nice, and some of them don't and are a little bit more affordable. All right, this design is wild. I could not believe the artist managed to pull this one off. Some of you are looking at this and immediately know exactly what you're looking at. For the rest of you, let me give you some context. This is an accurate layout of the medieval city of Konigsberg, which had the Pregel River running through it, and it also featured a couple islands. Due to the awkward layout of this city, the seven bridges of Konigsberg kept everything connected. Many people walked around the city and crossed these bridges, and some began to wonder if it was possible to have a walk around the city where you cross every bridge exactly once and start and end at the same spot. So for example, could you start here and then return here having crossed every bridge of the city exactly once? Well, in 1736, one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, Leonard Euler, solved this problem. And many people view his solution to the seven bridges of Konigsberg problem as laying the foundation for graph theory and topology as rigorous fields of mathematics. At the time, Euler regarded this more as a logic problem, but these days it's a classic graph theory problem. And if you're interested in graph theory, I have a course covering tons of topics from the the subject. So what's the design with its somewhat awkward fisheye lens perspective? It is, of course, Leonard Euler walking towards a bridge of Konigsberg with all seven bridges visible in their historically accurate arrangement. So looking back at the map, Leonard Euler is here walking towards this bridge, and you can see that perspective here. How many bridges are there? One, 
two, three, four, five, six, and you can just see the seventh here on the side. Such awesome work. It's got this beautiful sort of pastel fairy tale aesthetic to it. The aesthetic is kind of based on this old map of Konigsberg, this old depiction of the city. You can see, of course, the same sort of buildings and structure in this piece. It's so, so cool. If you like the design, check it out. It's the Seven Bridges Collection on Mathshin.com. You can even get it on an Adidas hoodie if that's your thing. When someone asks you what your shirt is and you're wearing this, you've got to give them the whole story. Story, a nice full introduction to graph theory. You might even want to consider carrying around a chalkboard and some chalk with you when you start wearing Mathshin clothes. Or of course, paper and a Sharpie gets the job done too. All right, the last one is wild. The artist took forever for this one, but boy, did he cook. Now understand I've printed this out with my home office printer and all the darks don't show up super great with that printer, right? So this isn't a commercial printing of the design. But this is yet another math design. And again, some of you know exactly what you're looking at here. So let me take a minute, grab a Sharpie and explain what the heck is going on here. When you first learn about functions, you learn about what we would generally consider to be very nice, well-behaved functions. You learn about lines and slightly more complicated functions too. But a function just takes an input and assigns to it exactly one output. So functions can take on all sorts of shapes. A lot of them have nice curves to them like this. This is an example of what we would call a continuous function. Roughly speaking, that means it has no breaks or holes or jumps or gaps. Over time though, mathematicians began to consider a more inclusive definition of the word function, really just focusing on that core idea that a function is something that for every input has exactly one output. So I could take something like this, which has a hole and suddenly jumps up, and this is a function, even though it's not continuous. It's continuous at most places, but it does have this single point of discontinuity. Perhaps that sudden jump isn't a lovely behavior, but there's no reason this shouldn't be a function. Every input has exactly one output. Every X has exactly one Y. But if a function is just a set of X, Y pairs, how far could we push the ideas of continuity and discontinuity? Could we have a function that has infinitely many points of continuity and infinitely many points of discontinuity? Well, in the 1800s, mathematician Carl Thomae said, yes, we can. He gave this function as an example in a textbook. These days, it's often called Thomae's function. It's defined in a piecewise manner, meaning that its behavior depends on what the input is. The function will output one over Q if X is a rational number, where X is equal to P over Q, which must be a fraction that's fully reduced. It's in its lowest terms. So if we plugged two thirds into Tomei's function, for example, well, that's a rational number and fully reduced, it's two thirds. So the output of the function would be one over three. If we plugged in five tenths, the output would be one over two because five tenths has two as the denominator when it's fully reduced to one half. The rest of the function is simple. It outputs zero if X is not rational. So if X is irrational, like pi, you plug that in, Tomei's function outputs zero. Now, if you graph this function, it has a very distinct appearance. All of the rational inputs create these interesting sort of triangle diagonal patterns. This point at the top is x equals one half, where the function outputs one half. This here is x equals two thirds, and this here is x equals one third. But then due to the density of irrational numbers on the real number line, there are just so many irrational numbers, you also get this basically solid line on y equals zero. And indeed, this function is discontinuous at every rational number, but continuous at every irrational number. Mathematician John Conway dubbed this function stars over Babylon. But if you turn it upside down, you could also see it being called the raindrop function. It's a really cool looking function. So for the design, did I just take this function and put it on a shirt? No way. Instead, the design features the function inverted and colored and glowed up to look like this sort of ethereal and mythical rain. 
It is set, of course, against a backdrop of the ancient city of Babylon. And standing at the center, holding an umbrella against the raging storm, is Carl Tomei himself. You can't really make out his face in this tiny home office print, but he does look like this. This is one of the early concept sketches we considered for the design. You can see Carl Tomei very clearly here, but I thought this put too much focus on him and not enough focus on the beauty of the function. So we set him back and put him in the dark middle of the storm, and this is what we got as a final product. I think it looks so great, and I'm really excited to get my Tomei's Function Under Armour t-shirt in the mail. I can't wait. So check out Tomei's collection on Mastion.com and you'll see various products with this beautiful design. I really hope you guys love these designs and go check out the store, because if not, I am cooked, man. This took so much money and time. <laughs> Like I said, we've got products at a variety of price points, so you can just pick up the Mathema Pigeon pins or stickers if you want something real cheap. But we've also got t-shirts, most of them are about 20 bucks, and we've got hoodies, Under Armour, Adidas, and some eco-friendly options too. I love the pigeons so much, man. I've even got the pigeonhole principle joggers. Here I am chilling with my kawaii calculator and the pigeon joggers. Yeah, check them out here. Again, I cannot stop wearing these things. They've got the pigeons going down the uh, right leg. Look at them all. Oh my god, they are so, so cute. So you've got the pigeons, the Mathma pigeons on the right leg, and then on the left leg, you've got the Mathshin logo. I felt a little lazy with the logo, like it almost just seemed too obvious, but it's also just too perfect. It's math, it's fashion, integrated together. If you want to get the Euler and the Seven Bridges design on a hoodie, that's an Adidas hoodie on mathshin.com. This is an earlier prototype. This is not an Adidas hoodie. And it also had some more vibrant coloring on the design, which personally, I just didn't think looked great on a big old hoodie. So the design on the Adidas hoodie has a bit more of the pastel colorings, and it also doesn't have this sort of fringe crop effect. You can see the whole design and all seven bridges. So this is a sample, but it's not for sale. This was sort of a draft. I got myself two Pigeonhole Principal t-shirts, but somehow I lost my other one. I'm so sad about it, but oh my god, they look so great on a t-shirt. Look at these guys. Here's the original, more pastel coloring on the Euler and the Seven Bridges design. Here on the t-shirt, we do have that nice fringe crop. I think makes it look a little bit more natural. I love wearing this to the gym, just looking in the mirror, seeing this, and just knowing it's graph theory. Optimal packing snapback is super slick. I love that green underneath this brim. You can get it in a variety of colors, Mathshin logo, embroidery on the back. If you're really bold, I tell you, you gotta buy this, okay? This is hilarious. We've got the pigeonhole principle boxer briefs. This is a picture of me pulling up my pants while wearing the uh, pigeonhole principle briefs. So there you go. I finally have merch, but it's not about me. It's about math, and it's the greatest math merch of all time. If you guys have feedback on the designs or ideas for future subjects you'd like to see covered in a line of products, let me know in the comments, or you can also reach out to support at mathshin.com. So check it out, pick up something you like, and tell everybody, please, tell your friends, tell your enemies, this costs so much money. And whatever you get, I'd love to see pictures of the smiling faces with these awesome Mathshin products. You could send photos to support at mathshin.com. There's also a Mathshin YouTube and Instagram accounts, links in the description. I don't know how much I'll need to use those, but I wanted them just in case. Also, Wrath of Math channel members, make sure to check the membership feed before placing an order. There is a 15% discount code for you there. So if you've been considering joining the channel, now's a great time. You can pick up that code and go get something from mathshin.com. I know some people are peddling AI products to their viewers. Well, I am not, okay? I've been working on this stuff since last fall and it's just so awesome to finally be able to share it with you. I'm really excited and I hope you guys really like this stuff. I'm so glad that there's finally math clothing that I actually want to wear. I'm also going to make a dedicated video Video going more in depth on the mathematics behind every design. Those will be normal Math Chats videos, they'll just happen to coincide with a Mathshin collection. But I'm going even further than that. Over time, every single design is going to get its very own original song. Those are going to be on Spotify and all your favorite music streaming platforms. But I couldn't start without a plain old Mathshin theme song.